Hello everyone, this is Malki Asad, and welcome to the second episode of the case report series. In the first episode, we talked about the case report definition, and I presented the different factors that can help you identify which case reports are worth publishing or not. In this episode, we'll talk about the case presentation, which is the second section of the case report manuscript. We'll go over the medical history, disease presentation, diagnosis, treatment, and outcome. And I'll also provide some examples from published case reports. How to start writing the case presentation? I always recommend having an outline before, starting, before starting writing, because that helps you look at the big picture before going into the details. That can help you also to stay focused and organized. When I started writing my first case report, my mentor told me to write an outline and present it to him before even going and writing any single word. And I was excited to start, start writing, but he told me, no, just do the outline and let's look over it and then we can decide about the actual paper. So I went, did an outline, and showed it to him, he made some changes, and then we, I, I went ahead and started writing. And that helped me a lot, and I used that principle not only in case reports, but also in all types of manuscripts. Having an outline helps your streamline of thoughts to be in the same place, rather than just going over so many details that are not related to the article. How can I write the outline? While I'm presenting the case presentations from other articles, We'll go over the outline of this, and I'll show you some, some samples. Let's tear, start with our first case, which is the accidental caffeine overdose we covered in our first episode. This is a case of caffeine overdose, and the patient mistakenly took a large dose of caffeine as his pre-workout -work, pre supplement. The author started by discussing the disease presentation, examination findings, and lab results. The case presentation follows the actual disease course and what happened through the case. So when a patient presents to a hospital or to a clinic, they give you their history, you do a physical exam, you, you get your, the results of these examinations, you order some tests, you get the results back, you formulate your differential diagnosis, then you reach a treatment, you treat the patient, and then you get to the outcomes. The case presentations follows the exact same line of thoughts. Why? Because this is how medicine works. You start with a diagnosis in mind, you confirm it through different tests you do, and then you treat the patients. So I recommend following this same uh, streamline of thoughts and this same outline for a presentation, but it can vary according to the cases as we'll see. So the authors here started by the disease presentation. It's a 30-year-old woman with no significant past medical history. And then they presented what the actual data presentation for the, for the patient. The patient was seen in the emergency department with these kind of symptoms. Then the authors described their physical exam findings. Glasgow scale, heart rate. After observation, they measured the same things and reported that. Then the authors did an ECG and they described their findings. So it's as if you are a medical student on a rotation or a resident and you're describing to your physician what is the, what's going on, but it's in writing. And you have to be careful when you're writing a case presentation, you have to be focused because there's so much details that you have, you found in the charts or you treated the patient, you have so many details you wanna tell, but you have to stay focused for two reasons. The first is there is a word limit for any article you write, especially for case reports. The word limit is usually shorter than the full text presentation. So check for the full text article. So check that before you start writing your article. And the second reason is that you don't want the reader to lose what you're talking about. Once you go into so many, so many details, the reader kind of get lost and does not get what you're trying to explain. So always stay focused on the actual disease that you're discussing. So present the things, the disease presentation that relates back to your case, to your case report. Also the physical exam. I'm sure you, these authors did several types of physical exams. 
and they might have found different things, but they describe the one that relates specifically to their case. The same here. They might have done several blood tests, sugar levels, so many things that might have not been related uh, directly to the case, but they chose to uh, choose specific things that they wanted to write. Then after the exam findings in the ED, the authors mentioned what was the actual reason for this caffeine overdose. And it turned out that the patient by mistake was supposed to take this as the protein supplement and this as the caffeine, but the patient mis took, mistakenly used this as the caffeine scale compared to this. So the patient had a very high dose of caffeine. And it's always nice to present pictures. It helps the reader get the idea that you're trying to explain. The authors then presented the ECG findings. They presented the picture of that, ABG results, lab tests, urine analysis, X-ray, echo. You can do that as a bullet point or as previously just writing it. Whatever you feel comfortable with. And for the outline, these things are the outline. The, the things I wrote on the left are the outline. So if you want to write an outline for this case, I would have a bullet point disease presentation, examination findings, and, and so, so on. Then the authors presented their management. After they talked about the disease presentation, the history, the reason for this toxicity, the authors presented their management, which was supportive. They, present, they gave the patient fluid, medications, and supplements. Then the follow-up results after the patient was treat, treated, what the, uh, the, the authors did, they did also at the end the treadmill exercise test. And most importantly, having a follow-up is crucial in writing case reports to justify the outcomes you had. Because if you have a follow-up one day, we're not sure what happened after a week, that doesn't make your, your case as strong as if you had long follow-up. So the patient here was followed six months after the episode and the patient was asymptomatic. I'm going to discuss another case, which is a surgical case, and it's called fetus in fetu. And this is a developmental abnormality in which a mass of tissue resembling a fetus forms inside the body. I'm not going to go into the details of this disease, but there are two main theories, which is the parasitic twi uh, twin theory and the teratoma theory. And the authors started similar to that case by discussing the disease presentation and the patient history. In this case, it was a 17-year-old woman, abdominal pain, five years, progressive, and they described the pain, patient history, menstrual history, and then they performed their physical exam. And they presented a picture of their physical exam findings, which I find always very helpful. Then the authors did some blood tests and a CT scan. The authors found a big mass on the CT scan. They described that, okay, that mass, and they presented the CT of that case, which again, I find, is, I find very helpful for the readers to get your goal from the study. The authors treated the patient surgically. So they explained the, sometimes if it's a new, new technique, I would, talk at the actual surgical technique that was performed. But if it's kind of known, I would just describe what, what interestingly or unique I found during this surgical surgery. And the authors here describe their surgical findings, the microscopic findings here. They describe the mass, its composition, and then they want, went to the histologic findings, which are the microscopic media. The authors at the end described their post-operative period, no problems. Patient was followed for two years with normal beta ICG, which is very important for this kind of cases. So again, it's following the same outline, which is history, disease presentation, exam findings, lab results or CT scans, imaging, the treatment, and the outcome. Our third case for today is the 18-month 
follow up after the first human face transplant. This is a very unique case as we discussed in our first episode, episode and the authors followed kind of similar outline, but you will see kind of sim some differences compared to the prior two cases. The authors present, started by the disease presentation and the patient history. This patient is a 30-year-old woman with a history of dog bite and amputation of part of her face. Then the authors presented the ethical approval. Since this case is the first of its kind, it was, the authors were not sure if it's ethically okay to transfer a face from a deceased person to a live person. So they wanted to make sure that this is ethically approved. And they talked about the ethical approval process here, which you don't usually need to do in your case reports. Then the authors talked about the surgical procedure. They didn't go into much details in the surgical procedure because this was described in a prior case report. This is the 18 month follow up. And the authors presented previously another case report describing the, that kind of technique. So the author didn't want to repeat that and they just mentioned it was mentioned previously, which is okay. Then this is transplant surgery. You need immunosuppressive therapy for the flap to survive. So that's why the authors uh, described their immunosuppressive therapy. As you can see here, all this information relates back to the treatment that and the case that the author is talking about. It's a transplant surgery. You need to talk about the immunosuppressive therapy, especially that this is a unique case. People who want to do this for in the future can have an idea of what the immunosuppressive therapy was. Then the authors went over each of these points that you can look up if you want to look at the article, the biopsy protocol to control the rejection, if there's any, the physical therapy, psychological support, functional results, immunologic and outcomes, complications, and finally, the psychological and physical results. And again, as you can see, all of these factors relate back and are very crucial for the outcomes of the surgery. Finally, I wanna present the case presentation and the outline of one of my cases. This is the, a sample of an outline. As it, we showed here, this is another example of an outline. The outline, you don't need to mention the details. You just mention the main points that you'll be discussing to have a bigger picture of the case that you'll be writing. Before I go into the details of this, I want to mention that when you're writing a case report, you usually the article starts with an introduction, the case presentation, and then discussion. But I usually like to start with the case presentation because this is the information that you have in hand. The introduction and the discussion will have so much information from the literature and your case. While this is the case presentation is information available for you, and you can just write it and then go to the introduction and discussion. It's fine if you want to start with the introduction, it's fine if you want to start with the discussion, but this is just my preferred way of doing it. For the full text articles, some people prefer, because the article follows the outline of introduction, methods, results, and discussion. Some people like to follow the same outline at this, but others prefer to start with the methods, results, and then introduction discussion. So that's why I started this episode with the case presentation before the introduction and discussion. And the other point is that if you are a medical student and you were not involved directly in the case, you have two options, either to go back to the charts and see the details of the case, the, what ha, what, how was the disease presentation, the findings, the treatment and the outcomes, or if the, sometimes that's not always available. If you have a good follow-up and good medical records or chart records, that would be perfect. But sometimes that's not available, so you need to talk to the people who actually treated the patient, uh, the physician, the residents. If you're actually the person who is involved in the care of that patient, that makes it much easier. But in case you are not, you either need to look in the charts or ask the people who work. And it's always to have documentations, to have lab results and images as uh, I mentioned previously. For this case, it was a patient with an abdominal wall 
defect. The patient went to surgery for resection of cancer, and the surgeon who performed this case recommended having a vascularized tissue to support the abdominal wall. This piece of ileum was going to be discarded because it had two holes, and the surgeon preferred to use it to support the abdominal wall rather than just discard it. The ileum was opened, and this was used as a vascularized mesh to support the abdominal wall. And as you can see here, this is the vascular pedicle coming through the mesenteric. So how about we discuss patient medical history, medical history and surgical history, as the other cases did. This patient had an extensive medical and surgical history, but I didn't go in the details of every single thing. I just presented the things that I believe were related to our case. Again, disease presentation, because this is history. This is prior to us seeing the patient, while disease presentation and diagnosis are what we actually found. So on our exam findings, what we found and what was the current problem the patient had. And the findings. The surgical findings, again, three teams were involved in the care of that patient. And if I wanted just to write the operative report, that would cover two or three articles. But you have to choose the things that would be most relevant to your case and the technique. For this case, since the mucosa secretes mucus and that might cause problems for the abdominal wall, we use special technique to remove the mucosa and reduce the complication rates and seroma. So this is a very simple example of the outline and I always recommend doing that before starting to write. This brings us, brings us to the end of our second episode. I hope you enjoyed this lecture today. If you like it, please subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram and Twitter. The next episode will be about the introduction and we'll follow that with the discussion and journal selection. Thank you so much for watching and see you for the next, in the next episode.